guys and welcome to the Happy Crafty Homemaker vlog. I'm Carrie Penny and welcome today to my living room. Um, I tried to film in my craft room but I can't get any light in there so I figured yellow light was better than no light. So <laughs> we uh, have a very makeshift setup here. Um, my husband actually made the model and he made the B9 robot over there. So, um, welcome to my nerdy home. Uh, never claimed to not be a nerd. <laughs> um, so this last week has been uh, very busy. I haven't had a chance to get a lot finished. Um, my dad's mother went into the hospital right before Hurricane Florence hit. And last week, her health was really trailing very fast, and she passed away on Friday. So it's been a lot of phone calls back and forth with the family and trying to get arrangements made for my husband and I to go to North Carolina because my dad actually lives and works in New York. So he needed to actually get back to work because he uh, came down while she was still in the hospital. So... Uh, a lot of arrangements had to be made and a lot of things to be done. Um, so I really didn't get a whole lot done uh, after probably Friday morning was the last time I had to really sit down and work on anything. So um, my cat just, older cat just jumped on the table. So hopefully he did not knock my phone camera rig here. So, uh, yeah, so it very busy. Um, it was nice to see my family, but I wish it had been under better circumstances, obviously. Because I know he's climbing into my whips or finished objects basket. Here, let me get this stuff out first, and then mommy give you the, mommy will give you the basket. At the end of filming, if he's still in there, I'll take a picture and pop it up at the end. So, I guess I'll start with my finished objects since the, uh, now both cats are standing here. So, if the camera, there you go. If the camera wiggles, I apologize. Hopefully, they won't knock it over or anything. But, um, so we're on to my second finished Christmas item now. That's a stocking. I do not like this heel. Uh, I don't know if I messed something up in doing it. It's shaped like an afterthought heel. I don't know if you can see the scene there. Cats, get down. Sorry. It's like refereeing with children every single time I sit down. Um, but yeah, you can see the slip stitch. And I love the way it was done in theory, but the shape of it is so square. It just doesn't look right. There's no bend and curve to that heel. That is probably the sharpest corner I've ever knitted. Leave my... <laughs> I swear, cats! But yeah, um... It's a round decreased toe. It's not decreased like a sock. It's decreased like a hat. And uh, I actually really, I like, the fabric is very dense. You see how little light comes through there. Um, it's a very, very dense fabric. It is very plush with that yarn. I just don't like the... I like everything but the heel. So I think if I make another one, I'm definitely going to have to change the heel for probably an afterthought and maybe go from there. But he's done. And it actually, I mean, because it is so thick, it would actually hold new things in it like a stocking. The other one I did, both of these will be entered in the fair. That's kind of what really pushed doing stockings. But uh, there is a knit stocking and a crocheted stocking category and this one is actually cool the pattern was written kind of funny 
the overall and links down below for every pattern that I actually used. And hopefully my written blog post will have any uh, list of what I did for changes. Um, but this is based on a V stitch. It's a free pattern. Um, the heel was inset. That is Pippin. This is Pippi. Pippin. Yeah. <laughs> he likes all the attention he can get. He likes to be the center of attention. But um, it's an inset heel and it's done as you it, you start at the toe and work up, do your heel and then rejoin in the round. The directions aren't perfectly written to follow, but the idea is there for everything. And if you're an experienced crocheter or have done socks before knit or crochet, you'll know what you're supposed to do. It is intuitive if you've done socks before. Coffee break. But yeah, the uh, brim is done with double crochets. And then I actually added a, the directions say to do a front loop only or a back loop only. They say to do a back loop only. I did a front loop only. So you got a nice brim where it folds down. And I added an extra row here because mine for some reason was pulling up too high and you could see underneath. But I made a couple of small alterations. Nothing really off pattern for this though. Um, and it hangs very nicely. The This one I don't think hangs as nicely. Mostly because that heel looks so funny sticking out. But that's... I, it's the way it's written. So, I need, I really don't know very many heels in knitting anyway, so I really want to learn more heels. And maybe if I find the right heel. And the only other thing I completed was my yellow and cream recipe hat. Um, I, don't, I don't know what else to call these. This one's in double crochet. But all they are is the recipe where you take the crown circle out a certain number of inches and then work down a certain number of inches. It's not, it's not a true pattern per se. Um, this one is a little bit big. I don't know if you can, I mean, that's, <laughs> it's a bit big, but heads come in different shapes and sizes. So that's another one for the donation basket. And it's worked with uh, Woolies, and I think it's Karen One Pound was the other yarn in there. Well, the shadows are... <laughs> My eyes aren't really that deep set. I do have a big nose, but <laughs> we keep catching the uh, shadows here. That's uh, funny. All right, but uh, yeah, that's another donation hat. I really like the way these two work together because if you've ever used... Woolies before. I keep getting, there we go. If you've ever used Woolies before, you know how it's a little bit thinner. Um, so it worked really nice with the Karen One Pound. And that's all my uh, finished objects for this last week. Like I said, it just, it was very hard to get things done. I do have another hat started upstairs. I don't know why I keep slurping. I don't normally slurp my coffee. Sorry about that. Um, it's, I'm using that team spirit and doing a half double crochet hat. So it's not that exciting to look at, uh, especially right now. I just hit where I'm doing these, just starting to just straight half doubles all the way around in the round. I got the crown done and now I'm just working down the length, but, uh, I really don't like working with team spirit. So Every time I see it, every time I pick it up, I'm reminded at how disappointed I was with the Mary Maxim mystery box. So, a little, little frustrated. Um, I do have a baby blanket that I'm working on. 
I don't know if I've explained properly on my written blog, but when I show you my craft room, that's 85% of my crafts that aren't holiday related. I do have home decor and holiday stuff in my workout room, but I also have random balls of yarn or collections of yarn that are sitting in my bedroom. Um, projects that have just been sitting there. I've got the Twinkie Chan donut pillow started and it's been sitting there as a UFO for like, mm, we've been here a year and a half, so two years. Uh, I started it right before we started house hunting to buy this house. Um, so it's been a UFO for a long time. Then I have a Christmas pillow that's been a UFO for about two and a half years in the same basket. A scarf made out of the uh, Red Heart yarn that was fabric that was part of the like ruffle scarf boutique line stuff. Uh, it's really cool. It's like a skeleton, it's a, sorry, skeleton skull crossbone Halloween print. Um, haven't had time to or even thought to go. It's not even time. I haven't thought to go and pull that out to work on it. Um, I also have the start, uh, or all the balls that I already own that were leftovers from my Dr. Who blanket that also correlated to the colors needed for the Star Wars blanket done by Two Hearts Crochet. Um, Alexandra, I think is her name. I can't remember her last name, but, um, uh, if you go to my written, the very first post on my written blog from this year, I, I actually show like the, the full Doctor Who blanket. Um, link to the written blog down below. But um, yeah, it went Reddit famous um, for like a week and a half. It's actually really funny because my nephew's, at the time, fiance's daughter took a picture of it at the state fair and shared it on Reddit. I'm not on Reddit. Um, I'm not on Reddit or Tumblr. Um, and she was just amazed at how many times this got reshared and people commented on it and, and communicated about this picture that she took. And her mom was laughing because she's like, yeah, you do realize like she's part of the family, right? And had no idea. So it was actually quite a funny thing. Um, I shared it in another nerd crochet group. And one of the girls on there had actually seen it on the Reddit share and was uh, laughing at the fact that somebody had actually done like all the blocks because it was originally written to be a much smaller crochet along. And I did all the doctors. So it was it was a very, very large blanket and a massive undertaking. But uh, yeah, so I've got like the leftover yarn from that that also coordinated to the uh, Star Wars cowl she did, crochet along cowl. Um, that's in, I'm not a rep, but if you have a friend who reps for 31, the utility totes, hands down worth it. But I have the extra large utility tote full of yarn already. I've got the black sparkle background ready to go and a handful of the colors that were left over, I mean like turquoise and uh, beige tan, things like that. I as I was packing up from the, the Doctor Who cal, I looked at the colors needed for that and set those aside. Excuse me. I just finished lunch once again. So if I, if I forgive me, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, I've got that sitting in my room and I've also had this bin, the 31 bag I just showed you full. I was, had planned on making one of the mermaid tail blankets. And I bought all this Charisma yarn to make a mermaid tail blanket. But the problem is, is as I have mentioned before, aside from just being overweight, I am very 
broad for my height. So I have to make everything a little bit bigger and I'm also the person who likes to pull things up and snuggle. So I had to buy about three times extra yarn for that than what the pattern actually called for. And I never made it. I started it and realized I didn't want a mermaid tail blanket. I have no idea why, just all of us, I guess I had seen so many of them. I was kind of tired of looking at them already. But yeah, I just decided I'm not going to make this. So for a little over a year now, I've had this entire tote filled with three packs of Charisma. So I decided, since I don't want to do that, I need to use the yarn. I just need to use the yarn. I, I don't want the yarn to go to waste. So I started a baby blanket. And it doesn't look like much because it isn't much. It's a bias blanket. Actually, I'm curious to see how that, oh, the border does show up. I started the decreases yesterday. Um, so I, I've, Obviously got a, that's my first decrease. It's uh, 40 inches or a little over 40 inches by a little over 40 inches. Um, so I started that and I want to, hopefully I will have time after I finish blocking things to do a matching hat and booties. I mean, out of this yarn, that sh shouldn't take very long at all. It just depends on how long doing the, the last of my finishing work for the fair takes. But uh, I'm still going to have enough of this yarn left over for I, who knows what else. But that actually was my travel project on the way up to Winston-Salem. I, I worked on that in the car as my husband drove because it's a lot of uh, street interstate driving. Um, so we did that. And, uh, of course, I only get about four hours of sleep. I don't sleep very well in hotels, especially the first night. Um, and just the emotional anxiety of going to a funeral. No matter, no matter your relationship with the person, it's always taxing to be at a funeral emotionally. Um, sorry, the cats are once again convening right here for some reason. Um... So on the way home, I actually didn't really have the energy to do much knitting. And yesterday, I took a lot of the day off just to kind of relax and uh, recover a little bit. Sorry, he's very distracting. But he's oh so toot. You're not going to face the camera, baby. He doesn't like having his picture taken, so I only have a handful of good pictures of Pippin. Curzon, on the other hand, is beautiful and loves to have his picture taken, so. He's my beautiful black panther cat. He's a perfect black fuzz muffin. So, yeah, that's, that's my uh, whips and finished objects for the last week. I do have three acquisitions to talk about though before I go ahead and head out. First, the creamer that's in my coffee is this stuff. International Delights, Reese's, where? Uh, wow. Seriously, camera? <laughs> now, I did a test on this the other day, or earlier today, when I was setting up my camera. No problem getting it to pick up the label on this. But it's International Delight Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Coffee Creamer. This stuff is vile. I don't know why I thought peanut butter coffee was going to be good anyway, but this stuff is horrible. I do not recommend it. If they come out with a York peppermint patty, that should be pretty good. The, the mocha part on this is not bad, but 
It doesn't make for a very good creamer at all. It, if you've ever had like very flowery gravy before, that's kind of what this tastes like. It tastes like there's like flour in it that didn't, didn't get cooked in the roux first. I don't like it. I, I really, really, I mean, you can, I don't, I don't, I don't want to spill my coffee all over my floor in here. I did mop this week, so, but it didn't really lighten it that much. And it just, it's, it tastes like raw flour. The other th normal kind of purchase I made was this thing from We Are Memory Keepers. And anybody who knows me knows I'm a sucker for storage. And this is just, I would, I do most of my paper crafts upstairs in my craft room. I do most of my knitting and crocheting downstairs in the living room or at the study. So I'm constantly in need of things to hold my stitch markers and needles and cable needles. And I use a lot of interchangeable needle tips. So I need something to kind of like help me corral these things that when my husband sees them sitting on the table, it doesn't set his teeth on edge that the house is blown up with Carrie's craft things. So I actually thought this was really sweet and I thought maybe he could uh, tolerate looking at it. But it, the top of it flips, and you've got a nice, I mean, it's not, obviously it's not super deep in any of these, but it's it's got a nice depth to it. So, like, I can put, like, the stitch markers for the project I'm currently working right here. And then you twist it, and it blooms out with all these dishes in it. And I really like the depth on this. I mean, that's about an inch in there. And I mean, having like all your stock, I mean, because I knit and I crochet, I have some really sweet stitch markers that have like hooks on them. I've got the safety pin style. I've got some that are like um, the itty bitty tiny jump ring with a seed bead over the join for like sock knitting and stuff. I mean, I've got a wide variety of just stitch markers that I use on a regular basis. So having these smaller compartments for those, having my tapestry needles and um, I don't know. I was just thinking it would be a great place to corral all the little tinies that I use. I've, I like things to be separate. I like separation in my organization. I love the Ikea drawer inserts for dressers and for desks because you just have everything in their separate little homes. I've been using, oops, knocking things off my coffee table. I've been using one of my little six by six art bins. Really, Curzon? He just threw my lipstick in the floor. He's such a cat. Kojan, you such a cat. Um, but yeah, this I, I threw everything in here actually to take it to Portland with me last month. Um, I had planned on doing a cable project, so I have... This is my favorite style of cable needle, to be honest. And uh, I've got my, my Lion Brand slide-on stitch markers because they work for... These work for crochet and for knitting because they're an open, an open ring marker. I've got my eat, sleep, knit, tape measure. Back from, um, I got that back when they did the uh, Malbrigo of the Month Club. I really miss that. That was so much fun. Um, but yeah, I've been using this just because I packed it for Portland and it's been sitting here, but that is not not how I like to do things. So I, I'm going to try the flower. If it doesn't work, I'll take it upstairs and put it upstairs in my craft room and come up with some other way to keep things together downstairs. But my final acquisition, I'm so excited. Uh, I watch the YouTuber 
No catchy name. Ella. Ella's channel. And she was sharing a couple weeks ago about how she got fabric to do Halloween project bags. And she had this super cute kind of vintage inspired, uh, vintage postcard inspired Halloween print. And I told her when she shared it that I'd end up buying the bags. So guess what Carrie got yesterday or last week? Yes, I did. I mean, how cute. Come on. The fabric is just so adorable. And they're, I really like the type of drawstring she does on these. I know this sounds silly, but a regular drawstring to me drives me crazy. But she's got the two-end drawstring. I prefer that drawstring so much more. And, uh, you know, she's actually got the facing on there. I mean, she did a really good job. The construction is fantastic. I'm really pleased with the construction, but I'm in love with the fabric. I, I, mm, vintage Halloween. I also got the accessory bag to match. The print's a little big for the small pouch, but I'm still okay with it. And once again, you know, the bag obviously is lined, but the accessory bag is lined too. And I can feel the, feel all the interfacings in there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I really like the bag. She did a great job on the bottom seam work and everything. I'm very excited. And I was trying very hard to not start using it as a project bag before I got a chance to share it with you guys. So I'm very excited about that. And I thought this was so sweet. She, uh, yeah, no catchy name. I was right. So she wrote a sweet little thank you. I love it card and I thought this was just the sweetest touch ever look at that a little stitch marker or progress keeper depending on how you use them and she's got the little heart punched out there so you can <gasps> how cute I just love it that is so adorable I, I love just, you know, cute little things. So, we're going to take my stitch marker off. And Ella, I do just love the print. Go check her. It is no catchy name. She has a YouTube channel here. She also, that I bought these off her Etsy shop. Go and check her out. She is so sweet and so adorable. And she also loves Halloween, which makes it so much more fun to watch her. But... Since we have my little flower here, we can go ahead and drop my progress keeper in there. And then it doesn't get lost. So this has been a horrible video for anybody who's trying to listen on headphones. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's all of my acquisitions. That's everything I've been working on. Um, I am working on compiling a list of questions I get asked, not through my blog or YouTube, but I get asked a lot of weird questions in some of the crochet groups I'm members of on Facebook. And some of the things I've come across, um, yeah, I started out as a crocheter to begin with and then became a knitter. And I've been working, you know, I've taught people how to do both over the years and I've, I've had questions from them, and then I've also had questions from people in the Facebook groups. Um, you know, advanced technique crochet or how to start switching the way you think about crochet into knitting and how to combine the two in your, excuse me, in your brain. Um, transitioning the way you think. Um... So I, I did want to share some of those things with you later on. Um, I don't have anything with me today, but if you have any questions about my personal experience knitting and crocheting, if you have any questions about, you know, what do I think you should do first, what kind of projects to do first, 
if, if you think of anything you would like to know, comment below. Um, I'd be more than happy to share in a video, but I do also respond to you any written comments that I get. Um, I get more PMs and personal messages through Facebook than I do anything else. Um, just because people see me in some of these groups commenting over and over and over again. Um, I kind of have a big mouth <laughs> and I like to make sure people get the help they need. So yeah. Um, if you have anything you'd like to know, whoo, 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 it's as annoying as it is for you. I think it may be worse for me because I'm trying to not look at the screen at all and actually pay attention to you guys and look at you guys. And I keep catching myself out of the corner of my eye moving around in the screen. <laughs> so it is, I don't know how many people actually talk about the filming process. But <laughs> it is very unnerving and very uh, distracting. It'd be much easier if I had somebody filming me on my proper camera versus me trying to video film myself. <laughs> But uh, yeah, if you have any questions for me, if you're curious about anything, if you're curious about yarn, if you're curious about the craft, let me know. And I'm more than happy to share with you any of the knowledge that I've amassed over the last 30 plus years. So knitting and crocheting. Um, so yeah, please comment below and hopefully next week I will have a couple of the questions with answers already ready to go for you. Um, make sure you go check out Ella's channel and her Etsy shop because she has other super cute bags out. I don't know if she's gotten fall up, but she just started previewing some of the fabric she got for Christmas too. So go check her out. Say hi. Um, check out her videos. I mean, she's got like way more subscribers than I do, but if you're not subscribed to her, <laughs> go go and check her out. Um, I guess that's everything. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Um, I might have a recipe coming for you guys soon. Uh, that will actually take editing though. So now Pippin is running around playing with my lipstick. Yay. So yeah. I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I will talk to you soon. Love you guys. Sorry. <laughs>